Mobile manufacturers today have done a brilliant job of educating consumers like you and me about components of a smartphone, like amount of RAM, storage, type of camera on your phone, additional features and softwares, so we all can make an informed choice and compare phones before buying. But one component, which many consumers may still find tough to understand, is the mobile phone processor. Indeed, we all have heard the terms like dual-core and quad-core or octa-core processors. But is a high account of processor the only reason why a phone will work faster or last longer for your use? And if you are looking to buy your next phone, how do you choose between two phones, both claiming to have an octa-core processor or both claiming to have a quad-core processor? Let us find out in this very informative video where we will build your knowledge about mobile phone processors and components, something which many people selling you these mobile phones may not even be aware of. And towards the end, I will share with you a simple technique to ensure that you get the most of your money spent. Hi, I am Altaf and this is your Tech Takeaway for today. We will begin with something which all of you may be familiar with. What are the parts of a computer? I can remember this very clearly, learning about this in my fifth standard when our school got a computer lab set for the very first time. A CPU, motherboard, RAM, a ROM or a hard disk, graphics card, motherboard, keyboard, mouse and some sort of a power brick or power source. If you're familiar with this, let us see in comparison to a computer, what are the components of a modern day smartphone? Mouse and keyboard are gone, you wouldn't need that on a smartphone. Hard disk is swapped to what we call as memory or storage. Power has changed to battery, RAM is still RAM, and we have a touch display which works as the monitor and the input device both. Which leaves the CPU, motherboard, graphics card and additional sensors and connectivity processing parts which are important for a mobile device. All put together on a singular chip called SOC, System on Chip. Basically a full computer on one singular chip. Manufacturers today have helped us understand how to check for RAM, memory, battery on a phone. It is simple. The higher the number, the better it is. A phone with a 12 GB RAM is better than a phone with an 8 GB RAM. So no problems there. Not yet. The problem is mostly in marketing by manufacturers where they show an SOC, system on a chip, they are using inside a phone on the box or the marketing material. And you find Snapdragon from Qualcomm, Exynos from Samsung, Helios from MediaTek or A14 from Apple. And making you believe all phones with this particular SOC will work at the same performance level, which isn't true. Let us see what is inside a modern SOC. And do not be too worried about the names and the terms that you will see. The idea is for you to understand what it does more than the names actually. For this example, I'm going to stick to Snapdragon 888 SOC from Qualcomm, which is one of their most modern day chips available. Some of you may have heard about this as it is one of the latest chips from Qualcomm available for mobile phone processors. You see, every time the manufacturer is telling you about an octa-core processor, they are referring to this part. And on the exact SOC of Snapdragon 888, we have an 8-core processor. Hence, it is called as an octa-core processor. One prime processor, three secondary cores and four efficiency cores running at very, very low speeds. This is done to ensure that the work of your processor is distributed well. So if you're browsing the web, the prime processor is not really used. Instead, the efficiency cores will be used, which will consume less battery. And similarly, if you're gaming, then the prime processor will be used to give you a higher performance. The next part is ISP or image signal processor. This is processing all the data which is coming out of your camera sensor and making your pictures look simply great. Remember clicking that night mode picture and after milliseconds of a click, your picture comes out brighter? Well, this fellow right here is making that happen for you. The third part is a graphic processing unit, mostly for display and managing resolution on your screen, along with gaming, also encoding and decoding videos along with other graphic intense tasks. Fourth part is meant to do all the artificial intelligence work on your phone. AI assistant like Siri, Bixby, Google Assistant, camera, scene identification, getting the best settings automatically and adjusting the battery life based on your usage and many more. Fifth part is for managing various sensors on your phone. 
Sixth part is for managing security on your phone, as simple as your biometric scanning for locking and unlocking your phone. Seventh part is for GSM and mobile networks. Eighth one is for Wi-Fi and other connectivity like NFC and Bluetooth. And lastly, cache memory for all these components to use and operate. So now that you had your crash course on SOC, you would say the best thing to do while buying your next phone will be to buy the best SOC out there. Well, right, but not entirely. You see, SOC like Snapdragon 888 enable many things, but it isn't always that manufacturers will utilize all of its parts to its full potential. Let us take RAM for example. Remember the 8GB RAM written on the box? One part of the RAM which we all are familiar with is the amount of RAM, 4, 8, 12, 16. The other thing which determines RAM performance is the frequency at which a RAM can actually run. Have you ever seen clearly at what speed the 8GB RAM is in your phone? Because an 8GB RAM running at 133 MHz and an 8GB RAM running on 2600 MHz can make a massive difference on how your phone will actually open up apps on a daily basis. On the other hand, an SOC like Snapdragon 888 supports the latest format of RAM which can operate at a speed of 3200 MHz. But not every manufacturer will use a RAM running at 3200 MHz on their phones. It is like having a car with an engine that can go up to 200 km per hour, but your car company did not add a part into it which can make it do that. Hence, it's only reaching up to 180 km per hour. You would say that is so stupid. And why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they just add that part? Well, in a mobile phone, the answer is sometimes to simply cut cost sometimes for a better battery efficiency. It could also be that the products are unavailable from the vendor or their software operating system is not optimized to utilize all the features from that particular SOC. Classic example will be Samsung S21. This phone is using a Snapdragon 888 SOC, but what they do not feature is the RAM speed that they are using or the format which they are using. With a bit of a research, you will find that Samsung S21 is using a 2750 MHz frequency of a RAM, while an 888, as you just learned, can support up to 3200 MHz. Which means for many reasons of the ones which I have stated already, Samsung chose not to use a faster RAM. So how will you ever know all the details and even make an informed choice about your next phone based on the performance? If every manufacturer, even after using the same marketed SOC, may not utilize the full potential of it. Truth be told, we are not supposed to do that. You see, when you are buying the fastest car on the market, would you go and open the engine and check every part and component in it? No. You will put multiple cars through a simple test and decide which car reaches from 0 to 100 in the least amount of seconds and you would have chosen your fastest car. Similarly, don't go by the manufacturer's publishing SOC names or these many processors at this speed and so much RAM. Simply use the existing testing tools to check how well your preferred phone performs on those tasks. Universally respected benchmarking tools are Antutu and Geekbench. Links will be in the description below. You will be able to find what is the ranking of the phone which you are looking to buy based on the performance test done by several users. An overall score should give you a good indication of which phone from a speed and processing point of view will be a better phone to go for. For all the OnePlus lovers, take a look at this. OnePlus 9 Pro 5G and Samsung S21 Ultra are using the same Snapdragon 888 SoC. But on performance metrics in Antutu, the OnePlus 9 Pro is benchmarked 34,000 points higher than Samsung's S21 Ultra. Hopefully, from here on, you will always check the Antutu scores before making your next mobile phone purchase and have a much smarter discussion with shops trying to sell you mobile phones stating their octa-core or quad-core processors. Share this video with them and ask them to even educate themselves better. If you like this video, then click the like button and subscribe to the channel to know more such tech takeaways. I will see you in the next one.